eight types of car suspensions. Double wishbone suspension. The double wishbone suspension also has an independent design, so the turning angle and suspension movement will not affect the geometry angle, because the angle will remain constant. The double wishbone suspension has drawbacks due to the fairly large space it requires. On top of that, when you want to replace a shock breaker or shock absorber, the disassembly process takes a long time. This suspension is fairly easy to get damaged in its parts, such as broken ball joint at the bottom or top, long tie rod, and end tier rod. To avoid various damage to the car, you can do sporing regularly. Multi-Link Suspension Multi-Link is a suspension developed by Double Wishbone and Multi-Link into a suspension that has a fairly complicated construction design because it has separate parts that are held together by joints. This suspension also has component ends that pivot on two sides of the arm. Construction is made by manipulating the direction of the force that will be received by the wheel. Multi-Link is a type of suspension that has quality grip, and with this suspension, controlling the car becomes easier. The Multi-Link suspension also has many variations. If this suspension is damaged, then the replacement process takes a long time and the spare parts are still rare, so the price is relatively more expensive than other suspensions. Rigid Axle Suspension Rigid axle suspension is usually placed at the rear of the car. The main feature of this suspension is its wheels on the rear left and right. The two wheels are connected into one axle, which is commonly referred to as the axle. The rigid axle suspension has two models at once, namely the axle rigid model, which is equipped with leaf springs, and the axle rigid model, which is equipped with a coil spring or often referred to as a spring. This suspension has fairly good quality and can be applied in various types of cars. It is fairly simple because it can work with just one solid piece and is equipped with two springs. The axle rigid is also considered a strong suspension, so it can support large loads stably, making it suitable for various types of large cars. Suspension can help dampen the vibrations or shocks that occur when you are on a road that is uneven or tends to be bumpy. With a good quality suspension car, you can stay seated without any disruption. The suspension is not only useful to help reduce vibrations when the car is driving, but can make handling safer and let the car can run stably on the road. With its very significant use, of course, the suspension is a must-have component in a car and it must get extra care. Now there are many types of cars around the world, and this makes a variety of suspension types available. Even the use of suspensions in each car brand is always different due to a large number of quality suspensions. Differentiating the type of suspension in each car brand is certainly a way to balance the type of car. At least several types of suspension are widely popular and used in cars produced nowadays. Macpherson Suspension Macpherson is a suspension whose name is taken from its inventor, Earl Macpherson. Lots of cars around the world use Macpherson suspension. Many automotive manufacturers like this suspension because it has an affordable price and also has fairly simple components. The Macpherson suspension has an upright shape and is supported by shock absorbers, which are used as the center point of the corner caster in the car. This suspension is also very easy to obtain because it's distributed widely. The disadvantage of Macpherson suspension is that it is less able to receive loads and the tilt angle always changes when the car is turned or turns. This makes the tires less able to grip the road asphalt properly. Double Wishbone Suspension Double Wishbone is a type of suspension that has two arms that support the suspension system, namely the upper and lower arms. With this suspension, the car can run stably. Independent Suspension Independent suspension is a specially designed suspension because the right and left wheels at the rear are not connected directly but instead by axle joints if the rear wheel steps on a hole, of course, the car will not rock, and this is because only the left suspension moves. Independent suspension is indeed widely used in luxury cars. The independent suspension has a more complex construction and the axle movements are mutually independent. This suspension is also equipped with two flexible joints. This type of suspension is still fairly expensive, so its use is mostly in luxurious cars. Rigid suspension, leaf spring. Rigid, 
Leaf spring is one type of suspension that is widely applied in cars circulating in Indonesia and is mostly used in commercial type cars or old type cars. This suspension is usually used at the rear of the car because this suspension is stiff. This suspension has a fairly simple and simple construction. This type of suspension usually consists of an axle housing that is intentionally tied using a U-bolt already attached to the frame. Cars that use this suspension usually have a fairly high level of resistance. Trailing arm suspension. Trailing arm is a type of suspension whose instructions are almost the same as three links, rigid, even though the working system is very different. The way it works is also different from the three links, rigid or other types of suspension. The trailing arm suspension has connected from the right side to the left. This type of suspension is usually placed at the back of the car. Air suspension. Air suspension is one of the developed suspensions that has excellent performance, so this type of suspension is widely used in luxury cars. Even in luxury cars, the car suspension can be adjusted using a computer, and this allows the adjustment to be done properly. The drawback of this suspension is that it has a very complicated construction when compared to other types of suspension. Not only that, but this suspension also has a very expensive price. Those are the eight types of car suspensions that exist today. Hopefully, this information can add to your automotive knowledge. In automobiles, a double wishbone suspension is an independent suspension design using two occasionally parallel wishbone-shaped arms to locate the wheel. Each wishbone or arm has two mounting points to the chassis and one joint at the knuckle. The shock absorber and coil spring mount to the wishbones to control vertical movement. Double wishbone designs allow the engineer to carefully control the motion of the wheel throughout suspension travel controlling such parameters as camber angle, caster angle, toe pattern, roll center height, scrub radius, scuff, and more. The double wishbone suspension can also be referred to as double A arms, though the arms themselves can be A-shaped, L-shaped, or even a single bar linkage. A single wishbone or A arm can also be used in various other suspension types, such as variations of the Macpherson strut. The upper arm is usually shorter to induce negative camber as the suspension jounces, rises, and often this arrangement is titled an SLA or short long arm suspension. When the vehicle is in a turn, body roll results in positive camber gain on the lightly loaded inside wheel, while the heavily loaded outer wheel gains negative camber. Between the outboard end of the arms is a knuckle. The knuckle contains a kinkpin for horizontal radial movement in older designs and rubber or trimian bushings for vertical hinged movement. In newer designs, a ball joint at each end allow for all movement. Attached to the knuckle at its center is a bearing hub, or in many older designs, a spindle to which the wheel bearings are mounted. To resist fore-aft loads such as acceleration and braking, the arms require two bushings or ball joints at the body. Double wishbone suspension in action as on display at the Toyota Museum in Nagoya, Japan. At the knuckle end, 
single ball joints are typically used, in which case the steering loads have to be taken via a steering arm, and the wishbones look A or L-shaped. An L-shaped arm is generally preferred on passenger vehicles because it allows a better compromise of handling and comfort to be tuned in. The bushing in line with the wheel can be kept relatively stiff to effectively handle cornering loads, while the offline joint can be softer to allow the wheel to recess under fore-aft impact loads. For a rear suspension, a pair of joints can be used at both ends of the arm, making them more H-shaped in plan view. Alternatively, a fixed-length drift shaft can perform the function of a wishbone as long as the shape of the other wishbone provides control of the upright. This arrangement has been successfully used in the Jaguar IRS. In elevation view, the suspension is a four-bar link, and it is easy to work out the camber gain, C camber angle, and other parameters for a given set of bushing or ball joint locations. The various bushings or ball joints do not have to be on horizontal axes parallel to the vehicle's center line. If they are set at an angle, then anti-dive and anti-squat geometry can be dialed in. In many racing cars, the springs and dampers are relocated inside the bodywork. The suspension uses a bell crank to transfer the forces at the knuckle end of the suspension to the internal spring and damper. This is then known as a push rod if bump travel pushes on the rod, and subsequently the rod must be joined to the bottom of the upright and angled upward. As the wheel rises, the push rod compresses the internal spring via a pivot or pivoting system. The opposite arrangement, a pull rod, will pull on the rod during bump travel, and the rod must be attached to the top of the upright, angled downward. Locating the spring and damper inboard increases the total mass of the suspension, but reduces the unsprung mass, and also allows the designer to make the suspension more aerodynamic. Advantages The double wishbone suspension provides the engineer more design choices than some other types do. It is fairly easy to work out the effect of moving each joint, so the kinematics of the suspension can be tuned easily and wheel motion can be optimized. It is also easy to work out the loads that different parts will be subjected to which allows more optimized lightweight parts to be designed. They also provide increasing negative camber gain all the way to full jounce travel, unlike the Macpherson strut, which provides negative camber gain only at the beginning of jounce travel, and then reverses into positive camber gain at high jounce amounts. Disadvantages Double wishbone suspensions are more complex, impose more difficult packaging constraints, and are thus often more expensive than other systems like a Macpherson strut. Due to the increased number of components within the suspension setup, it takes much longer to service and is heavier than an equivalent Macpherson design. At the other end of the scale, it offers less design choice than the more costly and complex multi-link suspension system. The double wishbone suspension was introduced in the 1930s. French carmaker Citroën began using it in their 1934 Rosalie and Traction Avant models. Packard Motor Car Company of Detroit, Michigan, used it on the Packard 120 from 1935 and advertised it as a safety feature. During that time, McPherson Strut was still in the area of aviation technology and was derived from aircraft landing mechanism. Later on, until 1951, Ford Company decided to use the McPherson Strut on small production cars, the English Ford Console and Ford Zephyr. Thus, the double wishbone was applied early in automobile history, and there is no genetic relationship between McPherson Strut and double wishbone suspension. Double wishbones have traditionally been considered to have superior dynamic characteristics, as well as load handling capabilities, and are therefore commonly found on sports cars and racing cars throughout automotive history. Examples of cars with double wishbone suspension include the Aston Martin DB7, the Mazda MX-5 NB, and the third through eighth generation of the Honda Accord. Short long arm suspension, a type of double wishbone suspension, is very common on front suspensions for medium to large cars, such as the Peugeot 407, Citroën C5, and the first two generations of the Mazda 6 slash Atenza.
A malting link suspension is a type of vehicle suspension and one or more longitudinal arms. A wider definition can consider any independent suspensions having three control links or more malting link suspensions. These arms do not have to be of equal length and may be angled away from their obvious direction. It was first introduced in the late 1960s on the Mercedes-Benz C111 and later on their W201 and W124 series. Typically, each arm has a spherical joint, ball joint, or rubber bushing at each end. Consequently, they react to loads along their own length in tension and compression, but not in bending. Some multi-links do use a trailing arm, control arm, or wishbone, which has two bushings at one end. On a front suspension, one of the lateral arms is replaced by the tie rod, which connects the rack or steering box to the wheel hub. The solid axle multi-link system is another variation of the same concept and offers some advantages over independent multi-link, as it is significantly cheaper and less complex to build, offering good mechanical resistance and excellent reliability with very similar benefits. Advantages Multi-link suspension allows the auto designer the ability to incorporate both good ride and good handling in the same vehicle. In its simplest form, multi-link suspension is orthogonal. E. It is possible to alter one parameter in the suspension at a time, without affecting anything else. This is in direct contrast to a double wishbone suspension, where moving a hard point or changing a bushing compliance will affect two or more parameters. The benefit of the triangulated and double triangulated arrangement is that they do not need a panhard bar. The benefits of this are increased articulation and potential ease of installation. Multi-link for solid axle offers a benefit over the independent multi-link in that it is significantly cheaper and much less complex to build. Disadvantages Multi-link suspension is costly and complex. It is also difficult to tune the geometry without a full 3D computer-aided design analysis. Compliance under load can have an important effect and must be checked using a multi-body simulation software. A beam axle, rigid axle, or solid axle is a dependent suspension design in which a set of wheels is connected laterally by a single beam or shaft. Beam axles were once commonly used at the rear wheels of a vehicle, but historically they have also been used as front axles in four-wheel drive vehicles. In most automobiles, beam axles have been replaced with front and rear independent suspensions. With a beam axle, the camber angle between the wheels is the same no matter where it is in the travel of the suspension. A beam axle's fore and aft location is constrained by either trailing arms, semi-trailing arms, radius rods, or leaf springs. The lateral location can be constrained by a panhard rod, a Scott Russell linkage or a Watts linkage, or some other arrangement, most commonly by the leaf springs. Shock absorbers and either leaf springs, coil springs, or airbags are used to control vertical movement. The twist beam rear suspension is a similar suspension design, however its beam axle is able to twist, thereby functioning as an anti-roll bar to control the roll motion of the body, and is considered to be a semi-independent suspension design. A live axle is a type of beam axle in which the shaft, or Commonly, shafts connected to move as a single unit also transmits power to the wheels. A beam axle that does not also transmit power is sometimes called a dead axle. While typically used in vehicles with Hotchkiss drive, this suspension system can also be used with other types of power transmission. Advantages A beam axle is typically simple in design, rugged, and inexpensive to manufacture. 
Only one universal joint or constant velocity joint is needed at each steered and driven drive wheel, and none are needed at non-steered wheels. This reduces maintenance requirements and manufacturing costs compared to independent suspensions, which typically require two such joints at each driven wheel. A beam axle is space efficient, an important advantage for off-road applications, as it provides better vehicle articulation and durability in a high load environment. Camber angle is rigidly fixed by axle geometry. For a live axle, toe is typically fixed as well. As the vehicle's body rolls during hard cornering, the unchanging camber yields predictable handling, at least on smooth surfaces. Wheel alignment is simplified. Traction, braking, and tire wear characteristics do not change as the suspension is compressed. These are great benefits in a vehicle that carries heavy loads, and together with the beam axle's characteristic strength, this has resulted in front and rear beam axles being nearly universal in buses and heavy-duty trucks. Most light and medium-duty pickup trucks, SUVs and vans also use a beam axle, at least in the rear. Disadvantages a beam axle does not allow each wheel to move independently, in response to uneven surfaces, and handling is typically worse than more sophisticated suspension designs. In turns, the outside wheel is often subjected to adverse camber angles when the inside wheel hits a bump, which can suddenly reduce cornering grip and destabilize the vehicle. Camber angle cannot change during body roll, and the geometric roll center of the suspension is always fixed at the physical axle midpoint, limiting suspension tuning options. Furthermore, the roll center moves in reaction to road irregularities. Two is typically fixed at zero for a live axle, and dynamic toe control is difficult to implement. The mass of the beam is part of the unsprung weight of the vehicle, hurting ride quality. The need for lateral location devices, such as a panhard rod or watts linkage, adds more unsprung weight and partially offsets the beam axle's advantages in simplicity, space efficiency, and cost. In a vehicle with conventional Hotchkiss drive, the entire axle may twist in its mounts in reaction to torque loads. During hard acceleration, this may reduce traction and induce wheel hop or sudden adverse toe changes. The bulky differential housing of a Hotchkiss live axle reduces ground clearance, hindering the vehicle's ability to ford deep mud, clear obstacles, and negotiate deeply rutted roads. The differential housing can only be raised by using larger wheels and tires, typically with a penalty in unsprung weight, braking effectiveness, and acquisition costs. Furthermore, vehicle modifications may be necessary for adequate fender or frame clearance. Front beam axle suspension is unusually sensitive to any lack of concentricity in the hub and wheel assembly, which can cause a side-to-side -side oscillation, shimmy, of the steering at certain speeds, typically 60 to 80 km per hour, commonly referred to as death wobble within the 4x4 community. This is addressed on some vehicles with steering dampers, although removal and careful refitting of the front wheels often cures the problem. The Macpherson strut is a type of automotive suspension system that uses the top of a telescopic damper as the upper steering pivot. It is widely used in the front suspension of modern vehicles and is named for American automotive engineer Earl S. Macpherson, who invented and developed the design. A Macpherson strut uses a wishbone or a substantial compression link stabilized by a secondary link, which provides a mounting point for the hub carrier or axle of the wheel. This lower arm system provides both lateral and longitudinal location of the wheel. The upper part of the hub carrier is rigidly fixed to the bottom of the outer part of the strut proper. This slides up and down the inner part of it, which extends upwards directly to a mounting in the body shell of the vehicle. 
The line from the strut's top mount to the bottom ball joint on the control arm gives the steering axis inclination. The strut's axis may be angled inwards from the steering axis at the bottom to clear the tire. This makes the bottom follow an arc when steering. To be really successful, the Macpherson strut required the introduction of unitary construction because it needs a substantial vertical space and a strong top mount, which unibodies can provide, while benefiting them by distributing stresses. The strut will usually carry both the coil spring on which the body is suspended and the shock absorber, which is usually in the form of a cartridge mounted within the strut. The strut can also have the steering arm built into the lower outer portion. The whole assembly is very simple and can be pre-assembled into a unit. Also by eliminating the upper control arm, it allows for more width in the engine compartment, which is useful for smaller cars, particularly with transverse mounted engines, such as most front wheel drive vehicles have. It can be further simplified, if needed, by substituting an anti-roll bar, torsion bar, for the radius arm. For those reasons, it has become almost ubiquitous with low-cost manufacturers. Furthermore, it offers an easy method to set suspension geometry. Many modern implementations replace the lower control arm by a wishbone. An anti-roll bar is optional and, if present, is attached by a ball-jointed rod to the spring damper or by a ball or last miracle jointed rod to the wishbone. Advantages and Disadvantages Because McPherson struts are packaged with a significant structure in the front crash structure of the car, it is easier to engineer cars that pass more stringent small overlap crashes with struts over a double wishbone suspension. Notable examples include the Honda Accord and Civic, as well as the Mercedes E-Class, which both adopted struts to improve crash performance. The overall simplicity of the design also means there are fewer joints in the suspension to wear over time, affecting handling and steering feel. Inverted monotube struts can also provide extra rigidity in the front suspension as seen in the Porsche 911 GT3 and Cayman GT4, as well as the Subaru Impreza WRX STI. Finally, struts can package more efficiently than other types of front suspension, which allows for significant cargo space in rear slash mid engine cars like the Porsche 911 and Boxster. Geometric analysis shows it cannot allow vertical movement of the wheel without some degree of either camber angle change, sideways movement, or both. It is not generally considered to give as good handling as a double wishbone or multi-link suspension because it allows the engineers less freedom to choose camber change and roll center. Cars that have cockpit adjustable ride height generally cannot have Macpherson struts because of the camber changes that are an unavoidable part of the design. Ride suffers because the shock absorber has almost the same vertical motion as the wheel, so there is relatively little leverage to break the stiction in the seals. A standard single pivot Macpherson strut also tends to have positive scrub where the center of the steering axis is offset from the center of the front tires, which results in torque steer. Despite these drawbacks, the Macpherson strut setup is still used on some high-performance cars because they tend to have relatively small suspension travel and so do not see the kinematic problems. Porsche 911 up until the 1989 model year, 964, used a similar strut design that does not have coil springs using torsion bar suspension instead. After that point, all Porsche 911s have had front Macpherson struts except the 992-based 911 GT3, which uses double wishbone. In recent years, General Motors and Ford have introduced a modified strut setup, Hyper Strut and Revoknuckle, respectively, that split the strut into two components that handle the up and down flexibility and steering dynamics separately. The benefits of this design are greater surface contact and reduction in torque steer, the drawback are the additional weight and cost, but less expensive than either a double wishbone and multi-link setup. Honda also introduced another variation strut setup called Dual Axis, applied in the suspension setup of the Civic Type R. Another variant of the Macpherson strut is the double pivot front suspension, which splits the lower wishbone into two while retaining the standard upright design of the Macpherson strut. 
This allows for better control of steering geometry and scrub radius while allowing for a larger brake assembly. Independent suspension is any automobile suspension system that allows each wheel on the same axle to move vertically, e-reacting to a bump on the road independently of the others. This is contrasted with a beam axle or DD and axle system in which the wheels are linked. Movement on one side does not affect the wheel on the other side. Independent refers to the motion or path of movement of the wheels or suspension. It is common for the left and right sides of the suspension to be connected with anti-roll bars or other such mechanisms. The anti-roll bar ties the left and right suspension spring rates together but does not tie their motion together. Most modern vehicles have independent front suspension IFS. Many vehicles also have an independent rear suspension IRS. IRS, as the name implies, has the rear wheels independently sprung. A fully independent suspension has an independent suspension on all wheels. Some early independent systems used swing axles, but modern systems use Chapman or Macpherson struts, trailing arms, multi-link, or wishbones. Independent suspension typically offers better ride quality and handling characteristics due to lower unsprung weight and the ability of each wheel to address the road undisturbed by activities of the other wheel on the vehicle. Independent suspension requires additional engineering effort and expense in development versus a beam or live axle arrangement. A very complex IRS solution can also result in higher manufacturing costs. The key reason for lower unsprung weight relative to a live axle design is that for driven wheels, the differential unit does not form part of the unsprung elements of the suspension system. Instead, it is either bolted directly to the vehicle's chassis or more commonly to a subframe. The relative movement between the wheels and the differential is achieved through the use of swinging drive shafts connected via universal joints, U joints, analogous to the constant velocity CV joints used in front wheel drive vehicles. Air suspension is a type of vehicle suspension powered by an electric or engine-driven air pump or compressor. This compressor pumps the air into a flexible bellows, usually made from textile reinforced rubber. Unlike hydro pneumatic suspension, which offers many similar features, air suspension does not use pressurized liquid, but air suspension is using pressurized air. The air pressure inflates the bellows and raises the chassis from the axle. Air suspension is used in place of conventional steel springs in heavy vehicle applications such as buses and trucks, and in some passenger cars. It is widely used on semi-trailers and trains, primarily passenger trains. The purpose of air suspension is to provide a smooth, constant ride quality, but in some cases is used for sports suspension. Modern electronically controlled systems in automobiles and light trucks almost always feature self-leveling along with raising and lowering functions. Although traditionally called airbags or air bellows, the correct term is air spring. Although these terms are also used to describe just the rubber bellows element with its end plates. Vehicles that have used air suspension include models from Maybach, Rolls-Royce, Lexus, Jeep Ram, Cadillac GM, Mercedes-Benz, Citroën, Porsche, Land Rover, St. John, Audi, Subaru, Volkswagen, Lincoln, Ford, and Tesla, among others. Some Citroën vehicles feature hydractive suspension, a computer-controlled version of their hydropneumatic system, which features sport and comfort modes, lowers the height of the car at high speeds, and continues to maintain ride height when the engine is not running. The air suspension designs from Lincoln, Land Rover, St. John, Chrysler, Subaru, Audi, Volkswagen, Tesla, Porsche, and Lexus models feature height-adjustable suspension suitable for making it easier to enter the vehicle, clear bumps, or clear rough terrain. The Lincoln Continental, Town Car, Navigator, and Mark VUI 
also featured an air suspension system, which offered a controlled but smooth ride. Jaguar and Porsche has taken this to the next level on their XJ and Panamera models, with a system that changes the spring rate and damping settings, among other changes, for their sports slash track modes. The Mark VII suspension settings were also linked to the memory seat system, meaning that the car would automatically adjust the suspension to individual drivers. The control system in the Mark VUI can lower the suspension by about 25 millimeters, one inch, at speeds exceeding about 100 kilometers slash a 60 miles per hour for improved aerodynamic performance. One way automakers strive to improve gas mileage is by utilizing active suspension technology. Tesla Motors offers an included active air suspension on the Model S and Model X to lower or raise the vehicle for aerodynamics and increased range. In 2014, the new C217 S Class Coupe introduced an update to Magic Body Control called Active Curve Tilting. This new system allows the vehicle to lean up to 2.5 degrees into a turn similar to a tilting train. The leaning is intended to counter the effect of centrifugal force on the occupants and is available only on rear-wheel drive models. Over the last decade or so, air suspension has become popular in the custom automobile culture. Street rods, trucks, cars, and even motorcycles may have air springs. They are used in these applications to provide an adjustable suspension, which allows vehicles to sit extremely low, yet be able rise to a level high enough to maneuver over obstacles and inconsistencies on paved surfaces. These systems generally employ small, electric, or engine-driven air compressors, which sometimes fill an onboard air receiver tank, which stores compressed air for use in the future without delay. It is important that the tank is sized for the task and can be calculated using a specific formula involving the compressor output, standard atmospheric pressure, and compressed pressure. High-pressured industrial gas bottles, such as nitrogen or carbon dioxide tanks used to store shielding gases for welding, are sometimes used in more radical air suspension setups. Either of these reservoir systems may be fully adjustable, being able to adjust each wheel's air pressure individually. This allows the user to tilt the vehicle side to side, front to back, in some instances hit a three-wheel, contort the vehicle so one wheel lifts up from the ground, or even hop the entire vehicle into the air. When a pressure reservoir is present, the flow of air or gas is commonly controlled with pneumatic solenoid valves. This allows the user to make adjustments by simply pressing a momentary contact electric button or switch. The installation and configuration of these systems varies for different makes and models, but the underlying principle remains the same. The metal spring, coil, or leaf is removed and an airbag, also referred to as an air spring, is inserted or fabricated to fit in the place of the factory spring. When air pressure is supplied to the airbag, the suspension can be adjusted either up or down, lifted or lowered. For vehicles with leaf spring suspension, such as pickup trucks, the leaf spring is sometimes eliminated and replaced with a multiple bar linkage. These bars are typically in a trailing arm configuration, and the air spring may be situated vertically between a link bar or the axle housing and a point on the vehicle's frame. In other cases, the airbag is situated on the opposite side of the axle from the main link bars on an additional cantilever member. If the main linkage bars are oriented parallel to the longitudinal driving axis of the car, the axle housing may be constrained laterally with either a panhard rod or watts linkage. In some cases, two of the link bars may be combined into a triangular shape, which effectively constrains the vehicle's axle laterally. Often, owners may desire to lower their vehicle to such an extent that they must cut away portions of the frame for more clearance. A reinforcement member, commonly referred to as a C-notch, is then bolted or welded to the vehicle frame in order to maintain structural integrity. Specifically on pickup trucks, this process is termed notching because a portion notch of the cargo bed may also be removed, along with the wheel wells, to provide maximum axle clearance. For some, it is desirable to have the vehicle so low that the frame rests on the ground when the airbags are fully deflated. Owners generally choose between having their cars tuck their wheels into the arches when their air suspension is fully lowered or alternatively, 
they can choose to go for fitment, which in partnership with stretched tires, sees the arch itself fit in between the tire and rim. Air suspension is also a common suspension upgrade for those who tow or haul heavy loads with their pickup truck, SUV, van, or car. Air springs, also called air helper springs, are placed on existing suspension components on the rear or front of the vehicle in order to increase the load capacity. One of the advantages of using air suspension as a load support enhancement is the air springs can be deflated when not towing or hauling and therefore maintaining the factory ride quality. Common air suspension problems. Airbag or air strut failure is usually caused by wet rust due to old age or moisture within the air system that damages it from the inside. Air ride suspension parts may fail because rubber dries out. Punctures to the airbag may be caused from debris on the road. With custom applications, improper installation may cause the airbags to rub against the vehicle's frame or other surrounding parts, damaging it. The overextension of an air spring, which is not sufficiently constrained by other suspension components, such as a shock absorber, may also lead to the premature failure of an air spring through the tearing of the flexible layers. Failure of an air spring may also result in complete immobilization of the vehicle, since the vehicle will rub against the ground or be too high to move. However, most modern automotive systems have overcome many of these problems. Airline failure is a failure of the tubing, which connects the airbags or struts to the rest of the air system, and is typically DOT-approved nylon air brake line. This usually occurs when the airlines, which must be routed to the airbags through the chassis of the vehicle, rub against a sharp edge of a chassis member or a moving suspension component, causing a hole to form. This mode of failure will typically take some time to occur after the initial installation of the system, as the integrity of a section of airline is compromised to the point of failure due to the rubbing and resultant abrasion of the material. An airline failure may also occur if a piece of road debris hits an airline and punctures or tears it, although this is unlikely to occur in normal road use. It does occur in harsh off-road conditions, but it's still not common if correctly installed. Air fitting failure usually occurs when they are first fitted or very rarely in use. Cheap, low-quality components tend to be very unreliable. Air fittings are used to connect components such as bags, valves, and solenoids to the airline that transfers the air. They are screwed into the component and for the most part push in or push to fit deoct line is then inserted into the fitting. Compressor failure is primarily due to leaking air springs or air struts. The compressor will burn out trying to maintain the correct air pressure in a leaking air system. Compressor burnout may also be caused by moisture from within the air system coming into contact with its electronic parts. This is far more likely to occur with low-specification compressors with insufficient duty cycle, which are often purchased due to low cost. For redundancy in the system, two compressors are often a better option. In dryer failure, the dryer, which functions to remove moisture from the air system, eventually becomes saturated and unable to perform that function. This causes moisture to build up in the system and can result in damaged air springs and slash or a burned-out compressor.